This is how you're used to thinking about the dispersion of the real part of the index of refraction. If you shine white light on a prism, then because the, the index of refraction is different at each wavelength, it refracts at a slightly different angle. We'll get into that later. And you can cast a nice little rainbow onto a screen. So what I want to show you is that our simple model captures this dispersion in the real part of the refractive index. So let's see, turn everything on. So we can look back at our expression for um, the dispersion. It was we had a complex index of refraction equals, let's see, the square root of 1 plus Ne squared over the mass times epsilon naught over, and then we had um, omega naught squared, omega naught squared minus omega squared minus gamma omega. But if we want to study NR, let's just let gamma be equal to zero. Let's pretend there's no absorption. So it's still, we're still modeling it as a little oscillator. We're just modeling it as an oscillator with no damping. Right. So if we make that assumption, then this is all real. We just have NR. And without much of a problem, we can just write NR squared is 1 plus the square root. I'm sorry, we've squared it now. Uh, is 1 plus n e squared over m epsilon naught over omega naught squared minus omega squared. Yeah. So if we have that, now we can think about what does that look like? Well, omega naught, remember, we showed was in the UV. So for something like glass, omega naught was outside of the visible range in the UV. So now let's see, if we were to plot this function, um, it would look something like this. Here is omega. We'll say omega naught is here. And here's nr. Actually, we're plotting nr squared. It's fine. So you can see what's going to happen at omega equals omega naught. That's where this goes. This blows up. And without damping, it really does go to infinity, infinity plus 1, actually. So it goes very high. But as you come to the lower frequencies, as omega is smaller than omega naught, then this thing goes down to 0 towards 1, but it stays positive. So it kind of comes down uh, like that. And if you want to think about the other side, as omega is bigger than omega naught, uh, then this thing still comes down. This thing goes towards 0. You approach 1, but uh, it's negative. So it probably looks something like this. Who knows? But we just care about this, because here's the UV. That resonance happens in the UV. And lower frequencies would be the visible. All right. That actually matches what we know about glass, because the reason glass makes these rainbows is because we have dispersion in the real part. But we usually think of it in terms of wavelength. We usually plot it uh, like this, where if we have in real, and now we're plotting versus uh, lambda. We usually think in terms of wavelength. So the UV is way on this side and the lower, below resonance, lower energies over there. And if you look up plots of the index, it looks kind of like that. And that is due to this curve. It's because we're on the low energy side or the long wavelength side of a resonance that's going to happen in the UV. So the kind of dispersion we get in glass actually is explained or can be explained by our simple little model of treating the electrons as a damped massless spring.